All right, so if everybody would please be muted, that would be greatly appreciated. So as people are joining us for worship, please remember this service is alive and online as we worship God. In preparation for worship, please take a brief moment to prepare your hearts and your minds to worship God, to draw near to God. Amen. As we gather together for worship live and online, we begin with the lighting of a candle by Anne Marie, the daughter of one of our newest families. May the light of Christ shine in you and around you and through you as you follow Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Today's prelude, Miracles Can Happen, was written by Vernon Keene and is being sung by Bridget Keene.
Welcome to our online live worship service. Whether we are young or old, whether we are first time or long time worshipers, whether we are full of doubts or full of confidence, joy or sorrow, in this place we are all family because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us. Good morning, I'm Pastor Jerry, and as many of you know, this is next week will be my last Sunday with you. And I join you with much excitement and anticipation as you rejoice that your next installed pastor, Pastor Diane, will begin with you on Monday the 28th. During this morning's worship service, we are live and online as well as being streamed to our, faceline, our Facebook page. This week, we thank Pat Swanson for serving as the liturgist, are so very grateful for each member of CPC's virtual choir, and John for his leadership in directing the choir and blending their voices for the anthem. And we appreciate Hannah and her gift of voice as she sings a verse from each of the hymns and songs today. And John is providing the behind the scene technology. As we open our lives to God, Pat will now lead you in the opening prayer and the gathering words. So from wherever you are, you are encouraged to participate in the liturgy by responding with the words in bold print, the P for people. Let us pray. Lord, we have come to you this day, bringing all that we have, our lives, our hopes and dreams, our fears and sorrow. We place these before you in faith and hope knowing that no matter what has happened, you are with us and blessing us. Open our hearts to receive your words and your spirit, that we may find healing and comfort. Open our lives to the wondrous possibilities that service and joy <clears throat> that you offer to us. Ease our minds and spirits, that we may hear the words of encouragement and peace this day. Amen. And our gathering words this morning are from Psalm 105. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call on God's name. Make known God's deeds among the peoples. Sing to the Lord. Sing praises to God. Tell of all the Lord's wondrous works. Glory in God's holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and God's strength. Seek the Lord's presence continually. Remember the wonderful works God has done, the miracles and the judgments God uttered. O oh Lord, our God, how great thou art. <clears throat> o oh Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And now, as Pat is highlighted and spotlighted and featured, <laughs> she will now lead you in the call to confession, the prayer of confession, and the assurance of God's grace. Hannah will then sing the response, we are forgiven, a response that is new to you and is from the Glory to God hymnal. Our call to confession is based on Psalm 139, verses 23-24. The psalmist models a transparent faith with these words, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. We express our longing for God's leading by our own transparent confession. And now join me in the prayer of confession. Let us pray. Gracious God, so often we look at ourselves, our gifts and our talents and wonder what you would do with these offerings. We don't think that we have much to give so 
far too many times we belittle the gifts and turn our backs on the needs and opportunities present to serve, believing that our gifts cannot possibly make a difference. We think that we must possess the greatest of talents and wealth in order to truly please and serve you. How foolish we are. Forgive us when we stop listening to your healing and comforting words and focus on our anxieties. Heal us, Lord. Help us know that you have given to us such blessings and that these blessings are truly wonderful and meant to be used to joy and service to others. Help us to bring our lives just as they are to you and to receive your gentle touch and healing grace. And now a time for silent personal confession. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our assurance of God's grace comes from 1 Timothy uh, 1, verse 15, and 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Hear the good news. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross that we might be dead to sin and alive to all that is good. I declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks be to God in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we are forgiven. forgiven we are forgiven <clears throat> thanks be to god thanks be to god we are forgiven we are forgiven thanks be to god thanks be to god and indeed we are forgiven and we were reminded that jesus said peace be with you as the father has sent me i am sending you so may you in some way share the peace of christ with one another either with those sitting next to you or by extending your hand out to the screen saying the peace of christ be with you peace of christ be with amen In response to God's grace and mercy, we give thanks to God through the offering of our gifts of time, talents, and resources. Ways to give financially are located on our website at cliftonpc.org and in the weekly email broadcast. On behalf of the session, thank you so very much for your generosity of sharing all that you have. And these gifts are used for the good of the church and by sending and sharing out into the community gifts of love and joy. As we remember that God's love is among us, we remember also that God loves a cheerful giver. So let us pause for a moment to reflect on the ways we are blessed and how we will respond to God for all of God's goodness, goodness that has been given to us as a blessing, a blessing to be shared with others. And now Pat will lead you in the prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Gracious God, everything we have comes from you. You fill us with good things. Our hearts and lives overflow with your abundance. With thanksgiving, we bring to you our time, <laughs> talents, and tithes. Use these gifts that you have given us to feed others as we have been fed, to serve others as we have been served and to bless others as we have been blessed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to hear the word of God, let us pray. Ever present God, in the reading of the scripture, may your word be heard. In the meditations of our heart, 
may your word be known. And in the faithfulness of our lives, may your word be shown. Amen. We started out with, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and give thanks in it. And we start today remembering that this is the day that the Lord has made. And the more we give thanks to God, the more we realize that God is ever present. And the more we realize God is ever present in our lives, the more we begin to trust God during the difficult and challenging times of life. The more we trust God in the difficult and challenging times of life, the more we become aware that God's steadfast love is forever present. And that is forever and ever. And because of that, we need not be afraid. So in the midst of all the negativity throughout the world and the entrapment we feel due to the coronavirus, it's helpful for us to slow down enough to think about where we see or experience God's love shining forth in our own lives and in the lives of others and throughout the world. When we do this, we can't help but say, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it and give thanks. Rejoice, God is ever present in the seasons of winter, spring, summer, and fall, and each is beautiful in its own way. Rejoice, God is ever present in the seasons of life from birth to death. Each phase of the lifespan includes joy, as well as some challenging times. Rejoice, God is ever present in the times of hope and in the times of despair, in the times of love and apathy, old ways and new ways. God is ever faithful and has made everything beautiful in its time. Today's scripture reading from the third chapter of Ecclesiastes is a reminder that there are different seasons and aspects of life that include beauty as well as inevitable times of trouble or evil or the monotony of life. Hear now these words from Ecclesiastes 3, 1 to 11 and verse 22. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to scatter stones and a time to gather them. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to search and a time to give up. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What do workers gain from their toil? I have seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also said eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to the end. So I saw that there is nothing better for a person than to enjoy their work, because that is their lot. For who can bring them to see what will happen after them? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's true, the more we realize God is ever present in our lives, the more we begin to trust God during the difficult and challenging times of life. As our faith and trust in God wax and wane, our faith grows when we let go of trying to control every aspect of life. The newest Presbyterian hymnal, Glory to God, includes a song entitled, Faith Begins by Letting Go. Hannah will now sing the first verse of this song. As she does, reflect on the words and how they speak to you. Faith begins by letting go, giving up what had seemed sure, taking risks and pressing on, though the way feels less secure. Pilgrimage both right and odd, trusting all our life to God. Indeed. Faith begins by letting go, 
giving up what had seemed sure, taking risks and pressing on, though the way feels less secure. Times of transition. No times are more filled with possibility and promise. Times of transition. No times are filled with peril and despair, such as this. In times of transition, everything is possible. Everything could go extremely well or be less than we had hoped about. So just think about, as I go through this list, every time you started a new school or the first time virtual learning was implemented, which possibly have occurred pre-COVID, think about the change and how you experienced it. Or think about the first time you moved out of your parents' home or when you graduated from high school or from college, when you got married, when your first child was born, the first day you were officially retired. Think about the first day that is tomorrow. These events all relate to changes, times of transition in the seasons of one's life. Rabbi Podick, also a novelist, summed up such changes in his autobiographical novel, In the Beginning. All beginnings are hard. It's hard to be a new baby. It's hard to start a new school. It's hard to move into a new home. Just ask Bill Watts. It is hard to be a new teenager. It's hard to be a new husband or wife. It's hard to be a new parent. It's hard to be a new widow or widower. Change and transition is difficult for most people. Change and transition were difficult for Jesus and his disciples. They gave up what seemed so sure. They took risk and pressed on, even though they felt insecure because they had no idea what to expect. Jesus called the disciples away from the familiarity of their lifelong careers as fishermen. He taught lessons that turned their beliefs and value systems totally upside down. Then Jesus, their friend, their teacher, their master, was arrested, convicted, condemned, tortured, crucified, and laid in a tomb. Then there was a disturbing report that Jesus' body was no longer in the tomb. The disciples gathered in the upper room filled with fear about the unknown, about their future. Everything in their life was changing and in unprecedented ways. And as 21st century disciples, you are experiencing change in a time of transition. You're experiencing all the change that has come about with the coronavirus. And two weeks from today, you welcome your first pastor back into the pulpit. A time that you have anxiously awaited and longed to occur is upon you. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and give thanks to God for it. The key to handling change and transition whether it excites you or frightens you, is directly related to faithfulness, both God's complete faithfulness to God's people and our unwavering fidelity to our commitment to serve Jesus Christ and his kingdom. As some of you know, an essential tenet that I live by is what I refer to as F and F, faith and flexibility. Because in my faith, I believe God is ever present and in all aspects of life, I know that God is with me. And so because of this, I'm able to practice flexibility. And the more I let go and let God's spirit guide and direct me, especially in challenging times, the more I become aware how God goes out before me. How God is ever present in my life, offering grace, mercy, and forgiveness. And what seemed challenging and upsetting will ultimately work out in God's way and in God's timing. I need to remain faithful and flexible in the process. F and F become cyclic for me. Faith opens the door for flexibility. Being flexible means I know God is in control and believing he will guide me through life's challenges. As God's presence and involvement is revealed in my life, my faith and trust in God continue to grow, inviting me to trust God even more and to have the courage to more boldly serve Jesus Christ in the face of life's challenges in all aspects of my life. And so I suggest three 
essential components of faithfulness to be embraced during this time of change and transition. The first is prayer. In 1 Thessalonians, we are reminded to rejoice always, to pray without ceasing, to give thanks to God in all circumstances and situations, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Philippians 4, 6 reminds us, in everything by prayer and supplication, make your request known to God. And in Colossians 4, 2, we read, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. So pray without ceasing. Make your requests known to God and spend time in prayer, becoming aware of what is going on. Discern what represents God's love and mercy and justice according to God's will and God's way. And remember, Jesus taught the disciples in the Lord's Prayer, Thy will be done. He didn't teach them, My way be done, Our way be done. Prayers are not to make things to change back to the way they were. Neither should our prayers be a time of bargaining with God. Oh God, if you will just let such and such happen, you fill in the blank. Then I promise you I will do whatever for the rest of my life. You fill in the blank again. No, the type of prayer I'm referring to is a prayer in which we consistently acknowledge first and foremost the sovereignty of God and God's good purpose for God's people. I'm reminded that in Samuel's farewell speech with the Israelites, he assured them he would pray for them. Following that promise of prayer, he cautioned them to fear the Lord, that is, to serve God faithfully with all their hearts and to remember the great things that God has done for them. Like Samuel, I pray for you. Recently, my prayers more consistently and fervently are acknowledging first and foremost the sovereignty of God and his good purposes for you individually and as a church, a church that is about to embark upon a new season in its life, a journey in which you will tell me goodbye and will welcome with open arms your next installed pastor, Pastor Diane. I too remind you to remember the great things that God has done for you is doing for you and promises to do for you as you faithfully serve God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and how as faithful disciples you keep Jesus Christ in the center of all that you do. Remember, you are the church. You are not another secular organization doing good things, vying for card carriers. As a Christian, what you do as a church is entirely different not only is it different, it is changing lives. It is life-saving. Paul's letters to various churches are filled with prayers that acknowledge the Lordship of Jesus Christ, the power and presence of the living God through the Holy Spirit in changing lives. Just a minute ago, Hannah introduced you to a new hymn from the hymnal, Glory to God. Faith begins by letting go. The words remain on your screen. Faith begins by letting go, giving up what had seemed sure, taking risk and pressing on, though the way feels less secure, pilgrimage both right and odd, trusting all our life to God. The next two verses of this song are verses about how faith endures and faith matures, a verse that includes the importance of and the phrase of living prayer. Faith endures by holding on, keeping memory roots alive so that hope may bear its fruit. Promise fed, our souls will thrive, not through merit we possess, but by God's great faithfulness. And faith matures by reaching out, stretching minds, enlarging hearts, sharing struggles, living prayer, binding up the broken parts till we find the commonplace ripe with witness to God's grace. So where have you as a church let go, giving up what seems sure? For one, you, were, you had no choice. You were catapulted out of the sanctuary into virtual worship. No longer would one wonder what would happen if you no longer had a building, a relevant question that interims often, often ask when they come to a church. For the last six months, you have not had a building in which to worship, nor to meet in. 
You love the building, the sanctuary, the memories of the last 150 years, but you let go of the way things used to be. And instead, you chose to encounter the ever-present God of all places in a venue called Zoom. In effect, you chose to worship God rather than focusing on the way to worship. You realize perhaps more than ever the importance and significance of being the church, not doing the church. Not doing the church in specific ways, such as the way the offering is collected, or communion is served, or how the choir members enter the sanctuary, or a particular order of worship always being followed with bulletins printed the same way year after year. The old ways of doing the church became secondary to truly becoming the church. Through times of prayer, many of you have shared with me how you've examined your life and you've begun to discern what is really and truly in, important. Your priorities in life have changed and several of you have shared how being the church and being in times of prayer have helped you to grow in your faith. The second component essential to faithfulness is to study the scriptures. What God reveals in scriptures needs to be the centerpiece of any Christian institution foundation, especially as it moves from one chapter of its story to the next. Long before Samuel offered his prayer on behalf of the Israelites and their king, God commanded through Moses that the king must read the Torah, their book of the Bible, all the days of his life. The king was to learn to fear the Lord his God by keeping the law and not falling prey to pride and disobedience like they had previously done. As Joshua took over leadership from Moses, God told Joseph to meditate on the Torah day and night so that he would be careful to do all that was written therein. The scriptures were the words of life for Joshua. And the Psalms, the Psalms are filled with times of praising the Lord, acknowledging God's faithfulness and love for his good creation, acknowledging God's faithfulness and love, love for you and love for me, emphasizing the need to love each other. Jesus not only calls and offers us new life, Jesus sends us into the world commanding us to go to go into the world to make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I, Jesus, have commanded you. Jesus then reminds us of his faithfulness to be with us until the end of the age. If you are to go to make disciples, baptize, and teach, then there is a need to know what to teach how to teach God's word that involves the scriptures and what the scriptures have to say. Since the pandemic, I have sensed a hunger and a thirst for Bible studies, incorporating discussions and opportunities to discern how the scriptures are applicable to today's life and how to practice spiritual disciplines that help one to mature in their faith, as well as knowing how to move forward through this time of the pandemic. As you've heard the last couple of weeks, the women's Bible study explored the Jesus Creed and lived into what it truly means to love God and others by putting words into action, by organizing the collection of specific items for women at the Lyme Center. Loving God requires action, and they put their faith into action. And you're responding with an outpour of love and generosity was putting your faith into action. In celebrating your ministries, you will see a short video of a woman from the Lamb Center and how the generosity of people like you helped her to move from being homeless to being able to have a place of her own. What joy. And the Thursday evening Bible study looks forward to learning more about spiritual disciplines to help them grow in their faith and faithfulness. Several participants have agreed to facilitate the next sessions. Other Bible studies are beginning in October as the women's Bible study explores the Sermon on the Mount and the Sunday morning adult Bible study will reconvene via Zoom as they study Acts, Catching Up with the Spirit by Matthew Skinner. The focus of this class is to learn to walk more closely with God, with the boldness and the zeal of the apostles. 
This fall, you have great opportunities to stretch and to grow, to learn more about the scriptures. The classes and their descriptions are in the email broadcast. Each of you is encouraged to find a Bible study in which to participate. During times of change and transition, a prayer and the study of the scripture are important ways in dealing with change and transition. These become expressions of your faithfulness and a commitment to serve Jesus Christ. Behold, the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is now and into the future. And the third component of faithfulness in times of transition is love and forgiveness. Love and forgiveness sustain the church of Jesus Christ. Love and forgiveness overcome anger and resentment. Love and forgiveness freely expressed are signs of God's sovereignty, God's faithfulness, and a sign that we love and trust God to do likewise. Yes, all beginnings are hard, but God's be new beginnings also produce joy and excitement. Friends, in this time of change and transition and new beginnings, rejoice and give thanks to God, for this is the day the Lord has made. This is the time that God is providing for you. Be faithful as God is faithful to you. Engage in intentional prayer, giving the glory to God, acknowledging God's sovereignty. Continue to study the scriptures. Keep Jesus Christ the center of all you do in your life and at CPC and love and forgive as Christ forgives you. Lord, we need you every hour. Guide us and direct us in this time of transition. Fill people with hope, your love, and much excitement as they begin to transition in receiving Pastor Diane as their next installed pastor. Behold, God is doing something new. A time of transition is upon you. God is breaking through in new and exciting ways. Rejoice, give thanks, and remember to pray, Lord, we need you every hour. And now you will hear the anthem, I Need Thee Every Hour, sung by the virtual choir. I need, I need, I need thee every hour. I need, I need, I need thee every hour. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. Lord, Thank you. 
Oh, Lord, our God, we do need you every hour. <clears throat> Let us pray. Oh, God, of all the seasons of our lives, the times of transitions and new beginnings, we need you every hour. We come before you acknowledging that change is difficult, but it is so necessary. We come in this time of prayer longing to grow in our faith and discipleship, learning to forgive and be forgiven, to love ourselves as others love, as we love are to love one another. Oh Lord, we need you every hour. May we live into the words that faith begins by letting go, giving up what had seemed sure, taking risk and pressing on, though the way feels less secure. Pilgrimage both right and odd, trusting all our life to God, to you. Lord, we find ourselves weary, wondering if we will dwell in the season of uncertainty and stress forever. Due to the pandemic, everything feels unsettled and upended. Tasks that used to be accomplished without much thought require planning. And they require additional energy that we don't have to spare. Children attend school in their homes or in buildings with multiple protocols for distance and safety. Parents attempt to work even as they contend with limited or non-existent child care helping with online learning and the anxiety and anxiety of tending to multiply and competing needs. Many among us now face not only unemployment, but the end of unemployment benefits. Others struggle with illness or feel overwhelmed with grief. In our worries, we call out for you to help us, knowing that you hear the cries of your people and respond with compassion. Use us, O oh God, to help bring your kingdom, your way, about here on earth. Your generosity to us is evident even in our anxiety. You give us a community of faith that upholds us in our weakness, encourage us when we ho have hope that lags, and makes your love tangible when we feel alone. When we struggle to see your providence, you sustain us with your spirit. When we fear you have forgotten us, you speak to us and you enlist us for your work, giving us purpose and meaning, no matter what our circumstances may be. When we are overwhelmed by the pain of the world, you reveal your glory in the beauty of creation. When we want to turn away from suffering, you send your son, showing us your resurrected word cannot be silenced. Confident in your mercy and grace, we boldly pray for your people who are experiencing food insecurity, the possibility of eviction. We pray for those who have physical limitations, are in pain and suffering. We ask for healing and for wholeness for those who have cancer and other diseases that impact day-to-day -day living. Oh God, we pray for those reeling from natural disasters. Especially, we ask you to provide for the victims of the wildfires raging in the West and throughout the Midwest, and the winds and the rains from unrelenting storms. We pray for those facing economic scarcity, those worried about meeting their basic needs. May those of us with two coats give one away, and those who have more than their daily bread share with those who have none in order that all may know that your manna appears new every morning. We pray for the peacemakers and justice seekers, the prophets and the policy makers, the caregivers and the activists. Enlist us, almighty God, to work together in ways that participate in your will and your ways so that all may experience the abundant life that your son came to give. O oh God, we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to say when we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. And now, with hope for the future, with hope in our God, Hannah will sing the song of hope. Please join her as your mics are muted. May the God of hope go with us every day, filling all our lives with love and joy and peace. May the God of justice speed us on our way, bringing light and hope to every land and race. Praying, let us work for peace. Singing, share our joy with all. Working for a world that's new faithful when we hear Christ's call. Amen. Knowing that the God of hope goes with us every day, the God loves us, that God loves you, and God calls you the church to be the church. We now celebrate and give thanks to God for the ministries that you share and enjoy. Perhaps one of the biggest transitions in life is birthdays and anniversaries, remembering the time of birth and remembering the time that step those words were said, I do. And now Pat will share with you September birthdays and anniversaries. Yes, we have many birthdays this month. Uh, on the first, we celebrate Mary Verzellini's birthday. On the 4th, Laura Baldoff Campbell. On the 7th, John Kim. On the 14th, Sam Kinzer. On the 15th, Emma Ross. On the 16th, Joy Rarumange. On the 22nd, Jacob Law turned 17. So happy birthday to all of you. And we have two very special anniversaries. On the 7th, Dave and Sandra Allard celebrated their 51st wedding anniversary. And on the 17th, Mark and Diane Reimer celebrated 60 years of wedded bliss. <laughs> happy anniversary to both of you. So happy anniversary and happy birthday to each of you. And John or Hannah, you want to lead everybody in singing happy birthday anniversary? Hannah, got it. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear friend, happy birthday to you. And happy anniversary. May those of you selling at celebrating anniversaries this month, continue to live forward with joy and happiness. Be a blessing to one another and a blessing to those you encounter. God bless you in your new year. May it be filled with blessings abounding from God. And now I'll call on Beth Korish. Everyone loves a parade and she's going to share news about an upcoming parade with you. Hello. I just wanted to make sure everybody's been getting uh, my uh, not so secret emails anymore um, because Pastor Jerry knows we're having a parade to say farewell to her next week and she will be sitting outside rain or shine um, and uh, we will be driving through uh, saying our goodbyes to her. It, some, the farewell committee has been busy with many little uh, plans and ideas that we are going to have at the parade. So from 10 to 11, Pastor Jerry will be out there and the uh, truck will also be out there for you to bring your donations for the WFCM, which is something that I know Pastor Jerry will enjoy watching. So uh, don't forget to come by uh, from 10 to 11 if you want to give a fond farewell to Pastor Jerry. Thank you. And I look forward to this parade. And I look forward to people bringing lots and lots of food. This is my final challenge to you. So those of you that read the newsletter or the um, broadcast know that just as in the Super Bowl, I presented a challenge to you. And in my final farewell to you, um, 
I present a challenge to you to fill Mark's truck. Mark, I hope your back doesn't get broken in the process. So Mark, a minute for mission now. Uh, good morning, everybody. I don't want to repeat what's already been said, but, it, but you do need to look at your bulletin so that you understand that this next Saturday, uh, we are filling the truck and the things that are needed are not greatly different from the past. So if you don't find uh, the long list, you can uh, bring what you have. If for some reason you can't be there on uh, Saturday between nine and 11, I mean, nine and noon, then the uh, large coolers are still at the entrance so that you could bring it by in advance. And as I mentioned, we mentioned once before, uh, we're still finishing up one great hour of sharing. It's remarkable what your gift will do. So if you have one of these, you can bring it back. If you don't have it, we'll give you an empty one that you can bring back next month. So we give thanks for those contributions to WFCM and the one great hour of sharing. And uh, you'll get to see more on the Lamb Center as I complete. Best wishes and thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And so now we'll take a look at the video from the Lamb Center. When I finally realized that, that it was mine, that I would be waking up every morning in a bed, uh, having my own bathroom, and of course, the big thing for me was opening up the refrigerator door and saying, oh, all that food's mine. <laughs> I just, um, it just really hit home. I feel grounded. I feel like I can really move forward with a life. Um, and I can't wait to get better. I'm still in that journey and process of healing and restoration. And I really would love to be able to love people and help people like the Lamb Center does with people. So the Lamb Center has a virtual um, fundraiser that is coming up. There's information about that in the broadcast this week. The um, program that they presented will last about 25 minutes and it will share stories of success. People will be encouraged to donate. Um, that is entirely between you and God, but I do encourage you to listen and to watch the stories because you have been a vital part in the success of these people. And as you continue to give generously, I know that will continue. There are also other activities going on this week. TLC will be me meeting on Thursday for the women. And if you would like to join in on the Zoom meeting, please be sure to contact Tricia. And now, as we celebrate who you are as God's people, as we remember that you are being the church, you're not just doing the church, we rejoice and give thanks to God. We give thanks for each and every one of you and pray that in this time of transition, it will truly be a joy for you, a time of great excitement, that your discipleship, your faithfulness will continue to grow all along the way. And so as we ring the bell, may those things come to your mind. And now, as you go forth from here, go forth knowing that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with you each and every step of the way. Go, be the church. Go, love God, love others. Be the church. You are the church. Go in peace with love and joy and hope forevermore. Amen. And now Hannah will sing the benediction response. New life has bloomed here. God's love has warmed us. 
Now the world calls us to spread that love. God's peace go with you. May it sustain you. United together, we praise our God. And indeed, new life has bloomed here. Thank you for joining us. And we hope to see you throughout the week and to see you next week. We can be reached at office at cliftonpc.org. And now, as soon as we are.